and this is Mr. T with another sheet metal ductwork fabrication project. Um, today we're going to do a 45 degree elbow square throw. So we've already we got our cut sheet. We have our calculations all done. We've already cut our pieces. We're going to start with the cheeks. So good habit when you do one, do both pieces at the same time, so you're doing all the same steps. So we're going to start from the bottom left. All right, so we're going to start the bottom left corner, and we're going to work our way left to right, bottom to top. So our first dimension, left to right, is a quarter inch. Now starting from the bottom up, I have a half inch and a one inch. Again, doing that on both pieces. Now for my intersection, this is a four by four, so we have four inches on each end, and we're also going to do four inches inside the throat, so they're all the same dimension. Four by four by four. So starting from the left, I measure my floor. Do the same thing here. Bring my line up square. Now from this intersection, again, I'm going to measure four. All I'm going to do is create an intersection. That's where my 45 degree angle in this case is going to go from. So now I'm here. So next I have to carry my 45 degree angle, so just using a combination square. I'm going to connect to that intersection and draw my 45 degree angle. And again, this angle line is going to be measured four inches because, again, we're doing a four by four with four inch on both sides of the throat. So you would match that dimension to whatever your throat dimension is. Again, we're just doing everything in fours. So I have my intersections, again, using my combination square. I'm going to draw that line up. So I have my four, four, four. So now again, I got to measure four for the top. And I'm just going to draw that 45 degree line back. Now, if we did it right, from line to line, line to line intersections, I should end up with the same dimension. I have 5 and 11 sixteenths of 5 and 11 sixteenths, so my pieces are even. If they weren't even at that point, I would double check all my dimensions, find out where my mistake might be. So last, I just have to add the rest of my quarter inch Pittsburgh return flanges and my half of one for the big end, small end. So I'm just going to draw all my dimensions and now use the combination square to finish all those lines. Okay, 
so I finished drawing all my lines out. I've added all my quarter inch for my Pittsburgh return flange, and I've added my half and one on each end for my big end, small end. I've done that on both pieces. I've also laid out the heel and the throat. We would get these dimensions from whatever our throat dimension is. And then our heel would be created by whatever we have for these two dimensions. Next, we'd start our notching and cutting. So I'd actually use the shear to cut off these straight lines and then go back to do all my, the rest of my notching. So a little trick, if we need to cut to a line, we can put arrows, so I know that's the line I'm cutting off. I can put X's, so again, I know that's where I want to make my cut. Next, we'll move over to the shear. So now I'm at the shear. So again, I put arrows so I know where I want to make my cuts. When I slide it in, I'm going to use the blade, the edge of the blade, to line up my line. I want to do my slant cut first. Here, I would do my slant cut here first because now I can use the squaring bar and it should cut off my other side square. So again, we're going to do that on both pieces. Now I can just move over to the squaring bar. And if I did it right, 45 and 45 is 90, I end up with my 90 degree cut off the edge. And the same thing, my other piece. And now I can finish all my notches. Now I did my shearing, I can finish my notching. I'm going to use my right hand snips to cut down the line to my inch section. And again, I'll do that on both pieces. Then I'll use my left hand snips to finish the cut. You could just use your right hand or left hand snips, depending on your dominant hand, where you get into the corner and you use our snips to turn the corner. and we could do it in one cut. So depending on the size of our cheek, might be depending on how we make our cuts. Now I'm just gonna finish all my notches. Don't forget to put a slice cut on the inside of the throat because we have to bend those pieces over.
now that I've finished all my pieces, my pieces match in size, I know I'm ready to do all my forming. These pieces are symmetrical, so I can just form them the same way and they will become the opposite. But if my, heel, if my throat or my heel varied, I might have to make a left and right or a shown, as shown and opposite as shown to make opposites. Okay, so I got my heel and throat off form and I'm ready to bend my cheek pieces. So if you have a cheek bender, you could just use a cheek bender to bend the throat side and the heel side. I'm going to show you how to do it using a handbrake and a rubber mallet. So what I want to do is I actually want to flip my piece over. I'm just going to use the brake as a clamp. I'm going to clamp my piece in and then use a rubber mallet. I'm going to bend that the throat over. Now I can just use the brake to bend my other sides. I'll have to slide over to the box and pan brake for my last bend. mallet on a brake. Never want to use a sheet metal hammer on a brake. Uh, you can cause damage to the machine, denting and stuff into the die. So you always want to use a rubber mallet if we're forming something onto a brake. So last I have to bend my heel and throat pieces, they're going to be bent at 45 degree angles. The heel is going to be up 45 and the throat is going to be down 45. So to bend at 45, I can do it a couple different ways. I can use the hinge pin as a guide for 45, so if I want a 45 degree angle, I'm going to bring the hinge up to about center of the, the lock plate and that will get me about a 45 degree angle. I could use an angle finder protractor, mount that to my brake magnetically. And bend up till I read 45. So depending on the angle, I could do it several different ways. So now I have all my pieces formed, ready for assembly. So last I just have to assemble. I only start with the cheek, with one cheek. I must use the heel and the throat. Start from the corner. Get my corner in and work my way out. So I did the here, so I do the throat. Once I complete, 
flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. All my pieces are tacked together. Now I just finished my hammering to close the pit right now. And there we have our completed square throw 45 degree elbow. We'd finish the end with wherever we're using TDC or slip and drive cleats for our big end and small end, but that is the completed fabrication of a 45 degree throw, 45 degree square throw 